I'm Richard Porter. I'm Johnny Smith. And this is Smith and Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and many other things. I was chatting to Gordon Murray uh, the other week. Which Ooh! Happened. Yeah, I know. Just thought I'd drop <laughs> that in there. And I, I realised when we were filming, I, I always feel like I can sort of say anything to him because he's quite quiet um, and focused. He does actually look at you and listen to you. Yeah. And I used the term grower, not shower with him. And I wasn't <laughs> sure whether it was appropriate. <laughs> in, in the context that it might normally be used or another one? No, in the context of actually, I was, I was stood next to his new car. Which has and, been um, announced, yes. Um, yeah, the T33. And I, yeah. I was stood next to it, having had a, probably had half an hour looking at it before he walked in. And I, I referred to his cars, in my opinion, the, the, this this one, the T50, and also the McLaren F1, as being almost growers, not showers. Um, in the in the supercar, in the supercar realm, in the supercar realm. What? So we're like a a, a bright orange Lamborghini would be a shower. It would be an absolute sort of, you know, veiny cock ring. Of a and car. quite honestly, it could have a two litre Pinto and be <laughs> one wheel drive. But it sort of wouldn't matter for a lot of the people who buy them as long as it will make a lot of noise while going through the city centre of oh, it's absolutely. London or Dubai or somewhere. Yeah, it, it's it's your ultimate male peacock with the fan of feathers shim, doing that shimmy, the turn and the shimmy. You do the turn and yeah. the shimmy, don't you? So yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's being driven everywhere in first gear <laughs> just for all the noise. No, what, he's, the person that's bought it is probably not interested in how fast it can go. It's just all about the rinse, the first gear rinse. And it's the, yeah, it's the peacock shimmy. So I mean, what I was trying to say to him constructively is that it's a bit like when you go into a gallery and you see an interesting painting, um, but you can't work out necessarily what's the most interesting element at first, and you can't mm. work out um, whether it's beautiful or just really interesting. And and that's I, I was that was what I was trying to say to him because I don't think the T fifty is a pretty car, but it's no, it's really interesting and obviously proportionally it's it's unusual because of the three abreast seating thing Mm. Uh, and the McLaren F1 I've never thought it was a handsome car as such but I've always thought it was again interestingly proportioned obviously the pack of the joy for me is in the packaging and then this T50 I reckon is the best car best looking car of the three Oh, the three, the thirty-three. Yeah, I think the thirty. His his new thirty-three, which is obviously it's it's a million quid cheaper than the T50. Bargain. Uh, so therefore, bargain. And um, I. It's inspired, isn't it, by sort of sixties sports cars, mm. the Alpha thirty-three Stradale. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a them, bit of stray dale in there, which um, is one of my favourite cars of all time. To look at, I mean, I bet they're horrid to drive, but just as a as a piece of design, I just think they're they're really fantastic. Yeah, and I thought the front end because I said to him, I, uh, I said I was a bit reluctant to to ask or to admit which bits of other cars I thought I could see in it, mm. and I said the front end reminded me a bit of a seven eighteen RSK, the the Porsche race car. Oh, yeah. Um, it is, it's, but it's one of those cars, I think. I mean, they've launched it in silver, which is a very safe, conservative colour, isn't it? It's not exactly um, mad orange or crazy purple or... Yeah. Uh, it's so, sort of vanilla ice cream, isn't it? But then, you know, sometimes vanilla ice cream is nice. It is nice, and that's the thing. I think it's about going, yes, we, we, we're, we're just going to let you kind of drink it in and savour it for a while and then and I thought you've got you've got to almost stand there and look at it for half an hour and then you start seeing these yeah. these swoops and these details where you go yeah that's actually really quite considered damn you Gordon you with your, your I, because they, as a general rule the styling models for future cars are usually painted silver mm. um, when they're shown off to management to get sign off, aren't they? And I think it is so that you're looking at the design, not the colour. You're not getting too distracted. Yes, and maybe it's because so it's he's not trying. too led by colour. Yeah, because it's not shapes. really 
Silver's not really a colour, is it? I suppose it's a shade. I think it probably is. Yeah. So that's. Um, but I, my I, wife hates I could, silver cars. <laughs> really? <laughs> she was in management, and a car was presented to her, and silver just go, "No, you're not. You're not building that." No, <laughs> that's it. On to the next one. Right, I'll see you in two months. But we, but we don't. I don't care. Uh, but, but okay. Uh, yeah, the, um, the listen. There's a story about when they did the MGF, and I, I presume in the, all the styling stuff, normally it was done in silver. Though actually, I've seen pictures of a lot of red styling models, which is quite unusual. And then when. Um, when BMW bought Rover and they turned up and they were like, oh, we've been working on a sports car, actually. They showed it off to them and it was sort of like bright lipstick red, almost pink. Oh. And and then apparently the, the German management slightly freaked out. We're like, what the fuck is this? And then Rover people sensed that they'd spooked them a little bit. So when they came back the next time to have another look at it, they'd resprayed it, British Racing Green, and the Germans all went, oh, yes, it's perfect. It's absolutely great. It's the same car. Just really? A less, oh, well, yeah, just a less layery colour. There you go, you see. So, yeah, I think, I, I mean, it was under also, I, you know, when you see a car under the lights of a motor show, those lights are strategically placed and they're there to, to kind of bounce brightness off different surfaces and accentuate curves or louvers or whatever. I think that's the, the T33 was in, was in a room which was like that, which helped because the silver kind of brought out those elements. But no, mm. I have to say, I really, I really enjoyed it, and I also enjoyed the fact that the, this building that Gordon Murray Automotive uh, have bought in Surrey um, is the old BOC building, and I think Bristol might be known by Bristol Cars, wasn't it? And um, uh, the same group, yeah, owned owned them. That's yeah. right. That's right. And it it's so eighties. It's like <laughs> it's like a very very new then 1981 centre parks I absolutely Hasn't love it has it. it not got I've seen pictures and aerial photos of it has it got sort of like little kind of hubs that spur off a central hub that's it so long yes. corridors within these little sort of like pods at the end yeah are, are they hexagonal they're some of them are, yeah so they're, I think they're hexagonal brick with a dome top like an observatory yeah. and I believe they are to mimic um, the a molecule of oxygen. Oh, that was the it whole was a, architect right. wanky approach on that side of things. Yeah, I know, and, I, and it is interesting because it's been semi derelict, so it looks like it it could be the the sort of backdrop for um, a, a slightly apocalyptic, creepy film. Um, but then yeah. you realise that in the depths of one of the buildings is. Um, some of the work that's being done for, and of course they're, they're they're revamping the whole site with a test track and everything. The test track's the first thing they're going to finish there, and um, hmm. and the the T thirty three is going to be built there. Of course, when you say T thirty three again, I, the, the the name I keep thinking of a, a lesser known Terminator robot that we haven't we haven't <laughs> seen the details <laughs> for yet. Cause was it? It's just just an admin robot. <laughs> Do you know, it's just it a just really processes efficient, expense just claims. Extremely I mean, it's, efficient robot. Yeah, and, and light. It's really necessary because otherwise, yeah. you know, everyone will be demanding to know why their receipts got lost. But no, the T thirty three processes expenses very efficiently. Yeah, gets them paid uh, at the end of the month, and you know where you are with it. And Not it can exciting, open and close doors but... for people um, very quickly but quietly. Yes. So if if someone's coming towards reception in a building, the T thirty three whips open a door, but you you can't even hear it. But it whips it open so yeah. fast and then shuts it behind you. Maybe like that BOC really? building, uh, the T thirty three robot was designed in the in the eighties, and one of its fingers <laughs> is a cigarette lighter, but they've blanked it off because that's no longer necessary. At the time, it seemed really cool that it could light fags for people with its finger. But it's like, you know the way that there was an era when cars still had an ashtray with a lighter in it, and then they went, ooh, this is, people don't really want this anymore. So they just sort of put a blank in the lighter hole and labelled it as a, as a socket. That's so right. So you went, nah, it's a lighter, isn't it? It's that's... the same with the, with the T33 robot. Why has it got... What's that? What's the, it the, there's a blanking plug finger. on one of its fingers that doesn't match the rest of the metalwork. Oh, yeah, no, it, don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about that, mate. Don't worry about that. Didn't I think that the, because of its ability to light cigarettes with one of its fingers, it starred in a martini advert in 1986. But, <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and then yeah. but, but wearing a bow tie, even though it's a robot. 
Yeah, you, and they did a giveaway of some toys for children. You could cut out packets of some sort of food stuff and send away. Do you remember you used to send yeah. away tokens <laughs> yeah. and get an average toy after about a year yeah. of saving? Yeah. It's amazing, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Which, or I was reminded last week by um, something I saw on Twitter about the Weetabix characters. Do you remember those in the, I guess it was the 80s, maybe? Into yes, the it was the 80s. They had a band. They, they, they basically had a ska band. That's right, because you, you could send away for music. And and I, one of the first p- things that I ever got, my first single was a Weetabix was a single from Weetabix. <laughs> I probably told you, because me and my brother saved up feverishly. We would compete about how much Weetabix we could eat. And this is weird that you brought this up, because I had Weetabix this morning for the first time in several years, because it's, it's the only cereal that's left in the cupboard. We're, we're out of cereal. Oh. I blame Brexit. But uh, actually, I don't blame Brexit, because Weetabix actually grown about six miles from my house. But um, needless to say... Grown? Well, it is. It's it is. It's grown. There's a field, a couple of fields which I drive past, and it, there's a big sign in them saying this is being grown for Weetabix. Really? So unless they're oh. lying, and, and it's not at all, it's just being grown. They must need more than a couple of fields. I mean, my boy, who's seven, could bang away six Weetabix on the bounce when he's hungry. It's like that, that's yeah. half the field gone already, surely. There must be more fields, but it's I nice see. that they label them so you they, know what the... F- I'd wish they'd do that more. What, like you're looking at a field that's going to be... A pitta bread. Yeah. These pigs are going to be wool sausages soon. Yeah. Or at least their their <laughs> legs and arseholes are. <laughs> All of the pig's bottoms you can see in this field are going yeah, to be, going in to be your... cheap, <laughs> cheap corner shop sausages. No, no name slim sausages soon. <laughs> yes, slender. The slim panatella cigar of sausages. <laughs> you know those? Mm. Um, well, so now the t- let's go back to the T33 car. Because what, not the uh, robot? I had, with the light of the yeah, not the robot. I think we've covered the <laughs> robot. It basically, a brief acting career in the eighties gave it all up. Just when we got an office job, and, and now it processes accounts for other robots. Um, but the the car, I've only seen pictures of it, but yeah, I thought it is it is very nice looking. Um, but I I was I was curious to see it in real life. But uh, it's apart from it being a million quid cheaper than the T fifty. Yeah, it's sort of more. Uh, would, would, does Gordon Murray say it's a GT car, or is he not? No, going that not far? not massively comfortable with that term. Um, he, which is ironic because GT cars often are quite comfortable. Yeah, he says it's not really a, um, m- much more comfortable than the T50 because the, he says the T50 is a comfortable car. So um, ah, clever. He makes a point of, of of building cars that have quite a high gra- quite a high uh, ride height. Or average mm. ride height, so that they don't need any kind of raising kits for going over speed ramps and all, and going up American driveways and all that bobbins. Mm. And it has a few sacrificial suspension parts for if you do go up a particularly savage American driveway at a friend's house. And um, and he was I even talked to him about the servicing costs. He was making a point of the fact it's really cheap to service. So it's basically really a good. really expensive car. But once you've got it, the tires are cheap because they're not specialist really. The oil, the oil services are cheap, um, so yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> this we don't experience. No, actually, you can just have it serviced at any Renault dealer. What? Yeah, yeah, it's a hundred quid fixed price. Service. I love that though. That was what I always loved about the VX220 Turbo was the fact that it's just it's it's so leery and it's like yeah, it's just it's the price of an Astra to service. Okay, cool, brilliant, love that. Um, I wonder if that's the case with the Ford GT. Where it's just it's it's Fiesta price servicing. I'm gonna guess no. But it's Mondeo V6. Um, oh, okay. So price. it's the sort of there's there's like three tiers of Ford servicing, and it's there in is. tier three. That's right. For most things, but. folds. Yeah, exactly. Folds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you know what? It, it was it was nothing but but joy um, to speak to him. I have to say, and um, we went off piste a few times. We ended up chatting for quite a long time. And if anybody hasn't seen it I, w- I would love to point them towards my youtube channel uh, video which is quite a, a deep dive but the car is cheaper because it's more conventional in so much it's got sided steering wheel it's left to right and drive it's being federalized which is costing them something like 22 million quid i think he said so it's 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 their first mass production car he said with inverted commas with a smile on his face but it's still a, it's 100 units 
Um, but it's yeah, st- I, he's 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 always said he won't make any more than a hundred of any of these things he's coming up with, hasn't he? Ooh, and so mm-hmm. it's, but so that's his promise to fans. But that, so I, that's a, what's the, what does it give you that the T fifty doesn't, or that the T fifty gives you that this doesn't? Apart from, I suppose, the central position, which I guess is just a draw for a lot of people, isn't it? Because of the F one, it is a heritage, draw. and it and it changes the entire proportions of the cabin and the the the, the of the car. So that you know the bonnet, the length of the bonnet, the shape of the nose, the the he want he made a point. He said I, I've had T thirty three in my head for about twenty five years since finishing, um, well more than thirty years since he f- um, launched the McLaren F one, of course. But mm. he said I wanted to do one with lots of Coke bottle. That was the sort of uh, phrase huh. that he referred to. And he says you can't really do Coke bottle on a three abreast seater because you need to maximise the cabin. And oh. you, you can't lean in the glass house too much because you're trying to get headroom and shoulder room in for all three occupants. So he, he talked yeah. to me around the car in that way that Gordon does. And it's just, didn't assume I knew everything, didn't assume I knew nothing, just really cool. Mm. This is the same engine as the, the T50, but a 1,000 RPM lower limit so eleven one rather than twelve one. Uh, I mean, <laughs> wow. hell, yeah, I know. It's, like, it's practically you'll be able to drive it like a mini cab. Yeah, exactly. It's just I'm just going to short shift it at no more than eight, eighteen hundred by twenty eight miles an hour. Yeah. I'd love it if someone buys one and refuses to ever rev it above five. Just, <laughs> just and you're like, I, I think it's the wrong car for you. Yeah, um, but I mean, it it it. So it's yeah, so it's slight. In, well, you could say de- Yeah, it is slightly detuned engine. What six hundred and fifteen PS? I think it is um, rather than six six three, something like that. But I mean, mm. it's not like blatantly cheapened or so. Same engine to to save on their R and D costs that they've absolutely rinsed getting that V twelve Cosworth engine through. Mm. He says it will do thirty to the gallon. Really? Yeah, with a range of about four hundred four hundred and fifty miles. And he said we've tested that. He said I'm not just pit plucking those those figures out of the air. Um, and <laughs> I just drove to Carlisle yesterday for no reason at all and. Let me tell you, I almost made it all the way back. <laughs> Do you know what? If Gordon Murray was a politician, at least you'd know that you were going to get the truth out out of him. If it was if he was collared in a corridor, I was like, "Hang on, you said that this is supposed to do that," and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, we'll do, it will do." Um, yeah, you, yeah Look, I've got the diagrams. Yeah, here. I'll show you here. I've charts. Got... Well, actually, I joked with him because like, when he was reeling all these things off, and I was, he was saying how good his new team is. That they're probably the best team he's ever worked with. And he and I and and he said, but I don't do any CAD stuff. I don't know how to do CAD. I just I've still got a drawing board. I still sketch with a ballpoint pen, and I I pause and I said, I bet you like post its, don't you, Gordon? I bet you like post its. And, he, and he, he paused, reached into his back pocket, and pulled out like four post its, and he showed them close up to me. They were they had the smallest, neatest writing on them. I almost couldn't see them with my eyes. <laughs> Did you look closely there? One of them said, "Optimize rear view mirror positioning by milk feed cats." Oh, it was it was just ring dentist. <laughs> it was just it was just brilliant. I have to say, it was. It was great. So yeah, my favourite angle of the the T thirty three is the rear three quarter. I think the back end. Ah, the okay. back end is the front. End, the front. Yeah, the front end takes longer to grow on you to maybe appreciate its proportions, and maybe you have to stand and actually be there with it. Mm. But the back end, I think, is is quite something. Back three quarters, and it's got this crazy. You'll appreciate it as a man that digs Formula One. It's got ram air scoop from the roof, like a, um, but it's shaped like a seventies F one um, air air box. So and it's uh. attached to the engine, so it moves with the engine, even though it's very very flush to the sort of Targa style oh. roof of the car. Why? He said, "Is he it just, a Targa roof on that?" No, I don't think. But he said they're going to make two other variants of the T thirty three. So ah, right. they're probably going to do some sort of spidery. Yeah. 
version. Convertible and the diesel, I imagine. Yeah, the TDI will be on its way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> T33 um, DI. <laughs> well, no, Gordon sort of took me to one side and said, look, we're going to do a much, much cheaper version. So it's going to look exactly the same, 3D printed out of um, Hessian. And then yeah. it's going to have a Mazda ZDOS 6 platform underneath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you know anyone selling a low mileage ZDOS 6, do get in touch. We're going to be... We're going to be combing the area. Yeah, GMA for is going to be absolutely vacuuming yeah, them up. That's, that's why we're based in Surrey, because uh, they sold a lot of ZDOS 6s around here. Well, oh, that's the only reason why they've huge, relocated at Grutvar. Huge in the Guildford area. So. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I think the T33 Popular Plus is probably going to be the hit of the range because it'll be just so much more affordable at uh, 14995 <laughs> I gotta say, he said, he said they had an awful lot of angry people when they uh, they sold out of T fifties within forty eight hours. He really, said it, it, and and some of the customers were <laughs> like, how angry? He said we had we've been fielding <laughs> angry potential customers for for months. He said, oh, and, no. and and it's odd because some of these people they were talking to for almost a year before the car was released because they'd hmm. expressed interest or maybe they were previous owners of, of of McLaren F1s or some some other high end vehicles and he said some of them were they just didn't believe him when he said they've sold out you know basically you <laughs> you've, you've had all this time to think about it you didn't press the button there aren't yeah. any more they've all been allocated and of wow. course those sorts of people can sometimes they just don't believe that it can't be possible um well if you've got multiples of millions to spunk on a car yeah you're probably used to getting what you want aren't you so i would have thought so yeah i know someone who's ordered a t50 do you i, I mean no i yes i do know them i don't know them well but i sort of i i i know them is he is, he is he or he or she old or young um about about my age i guess or your age maybe i reckon i know who it is i think you would this is well, there's only one person I can think of who realistically is. I don't think it's yeah. one of your. I don't think it's one of your grand tour mates. No, it's not. I'll say. Yeah. I'll say right now, it's not. I don't think they're in that league. No. I mean, they've done very nicely for themselves, but I don't think. I, I don't think not. they can spend one and a half million quid on a car, one car. Can they? Can they? Well, hang on. What's the, what's the T fifty? One point three. Isn't 1. it? 3. But isn't that then plus taxes? So yeah, that's, you yeah. have to add that. So. You've got to add another sort of two quarter of a million quid, haven't you? In VAT, yeah, which is just tiring, list. isn't it? It's just tiring. so it's, it's over one and a half million. So then, uh, but then what? The T thirty three is going to be what? Well, the, that, no, that is forty seven grand. Oh, the T thirty three is one and a half. The T thirty three is one. The T fifty is two and a half or two point right, oh, two point six. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's a, a smidge, a smidge of the price. Um, it really is. Yeah, yeah so, absolute smidge. Absolute. Well, gosh, oh, it's a thousand and ninety kilos. So it is over that's a insane. ton. So about the same as a chimney, actually. I, I mean, for that's you know, people rightly were very excited by the Alpine A110 being a light car, and it is. Yeah. But it's not that light, is it? I mean, and the and the A110. One of the, one of the shocking things about first seeing an A110 in real life, I thought, was just how tiny it is. I tripped over and one. And again, I tripped over <laughs> one. <didn't they? laughs> yeah. I I accidentally kicked it. And it went skittering underneath a piece of furniture. It was quite yes, embarrassing. Yes, you know when you go over a, a sort of a, hit, a raised threshold from one room to another and you don't yeah. quite pick your foot up enough? Well, that's like an Alpine 110. <laughs> yeah, and you, you know you can stub your toe quite badly if it's, if it's in the morning and you haven't got socks yeah. or slippers on. There's a lot of Alpine A110 owners, of which Gordon Murray is one, isn't he? He is one. Yeah, he is one. Yeah. They they just can't remember where they left the car, and then they pull the fridge out to clean the fluff out from underneath it. And, but wouldn't you know, <laughs> it's under oh, there. Oh, it's there. Gosh. It's all covered in the mysterious fluff. It's cold, covered in, in old milk, half a mouse, and <laughs> yes, God, a, a dog mouse. toy. <laughs> yeah, there's mouse poo <laughs> and a single sticky Cheerio stuck to it. <laughs> Um, well, that, I'm, I'm excited for the T33 in a way because um, I, I, I sort of prefer the way it looks. And again, I've, only, have, I've seen, only seen pictures, but I prefer the way it looks. Um, and I'm sure it'll be excellent because Gordon Murray generally is good at this sort of stuff. It's, so. e- it's exciting. And it's not just that. It's exciting about this whole new um, site that they're on. I, I, that's one, one thing that I really enjoyed. And when I turned up there, 
um, and I was doing my um, sort of COVID test in the car park, which is rock and roll. Um, I noticed there was an ox parked under a lean-to uh, just oh. at the side of the building. I was like, oh, that's cool. I thought it was a fire engine at first, and I walked closer, and it was a red ox. And Did that's you a, ask him about it? I didn't get a chance to ask him about the ox. I was I, I asked him about a few other things. We talked about Honda Insights, a bit of Jimny, a few other things. But um, How's, What's his feeling on the Jimny? Well, he's got one. Has he? Yeah, he owns one. And I didn't. No way. I, yeah, I didn't put that in the final edit of the T thirty three check because there was so much T thirty three to fit in. But I might yeah. use it. Yeah, he's he bought one. He said he uses it. Um, he sort of uses. I, I forget how he worded it, but he sort of said he uses it up and down his drive. But I was trying to work out what, like, how long's your drive? Or well, uh, unless he's moved house, I know his drive because I've been to his house. Oh, you have, haven't you? You absolute slag. Because I did a story with him for Evo because I had a smart roadster as a long termer and he used to have a smart roadster. He's still got it. And I, has he? He's still got it. He talked about it because I referenced wow. it because I said I love the fact that you've ha- um, had a smart roadster. He said, but I've still got it. He said, I daily drove it for 16 years. And then when I worked out how much I would be given for it when I was if I sold it, he said, I just thought I'd keep it. So he's still got <laughs> it. I don't know whether it's Excellent. under a lean-to behind, in, on... <laughs> On the premises, yeah, the tires somewhere. are really flat. I would love to buy Gordon Murray's. Imagine Gordon well. Murray's because he's probably lightened it somehow as well. He, we did talk about this when I um, drilled the shit out of it. When I went to, yeah, everything's got holes in the yeah. dashboard, the lot. Oh, I went to because that's the thing. I, I got in touch with him. I said, "Would you would you be willing to, to to have a chat to me about Smart Roaster and your experiences of it?" And he went, "Yeah, come to my house." So I did, and uh, and he had a go in my car, which was a Brabus version, and then gave some sort of a good download of his thoughts on how it compared to uh, his his regular one. His non-brab. But what was great was he did do a little bit of a sort of, here's what I would change about it. And one of the things he did say was he wasn't this roof system. It's just sort of needlessly complicated. It's great to be able to put the roof back, but, you, you know, with the electric roof version, you've got these side rails and they come out and that's probably pointless. So why aren't they just sort of welded in and then they could be lighter because they wouldn't have a clip mechanism on them. And he went through this whole thing. It was, it was fascinating. Yeah. And, um, he was. He also went into sort of like sort of slightly wistfully started talking about how because of the sluggishness of the gearbox, he was like, you know, if if you had sort of proximity sensors on the on the paddles that <laughs> that could sort of pre prime the next change, maybe it would speed things up. And you could see him sort of idly wondering about how to make that better. But he was clearly a fan of the car, even though it was it's a bit flawed. Yeah, flawed. Yeah, but that's really interesting. He's got a gym. his drive is quite yeah. long, but it's not it's not so long and hilly that you might need a chimney. I think I guess he maybe might in the use winter. It. Yeah, it's down a lane as well, so in the winter it might get, and it's in the hills in Surrey. So he, maybe, he's, I, don't know. I think he probably uses it as his sort of like around and about garden centre runs, that kind of thing. Yeah, but he said no, he just said popping just really to the tip. It. I've oh. got all this titanium I need to get rid of. I was going to say, I've got, I've got a load of really, really light black bin liners that I've got to get rid of. <laughs> I've got, I've got. <laughs> They've leaked again. These bin liners, I, I never thought I'd say this, but these bin liners are too light. <laughs> Talking of which, some it's heavy the, ones. The, the, this is an absolute pursuit of lightness. I was, I, I, when I sent you that message last night, I was hoping that the, the next T car by gordon murray was going to be a tea bucket hot rod but um but so but just just needlessly dangerous and light <laughs> so <laughs> so it's the, and, 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 and and when the stats are announced everyone's like i just don't think that's even possible i just can't I, see yeah how. there's you, you can't have a car that can carry people that weighs 205 kilos it's just that's <laughs> no it's not possible well i think you'll find it is actually yeah um it's got the lightest. I, oh, the the automatic gearbox in the T thirty three because there's a, it comes manual as standard, but it has an um uh, an also made by X Track Auto paddle auto. Yeah, that he says uh-huh. is the fastest shifting lightest auto box in the world. Is it auto or double clutch? Like automated yeah, w- manual. Well, it's it's pre selector. Because like a it's bus. Just, yeah, but quicker. Yeah, pre-selector, pre-selector. Oh. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about actually was last week. You know, you said about sports people being interviewed on the TV. They just come on the, sort of the hotter cams. Or yes, the just, <laughs> and I think well, I realised what it sounds like to me 
is certain types of old bus. Oh, you know yes, how, yes. And I, I, <laughs> you know, there's, sort of, there's certain kind of, if you're sitting at the back where the engine is on a lot of buses, you know, when you were at sort of school days, maybe it was like a Leyland Olympian or something. Yeah. And, and it'd be like, they do that thing where they go, well, that's yeah. right, that's and they, right. And they do a real sort of Glenn Hoddle being asked about his results, <laughs> kind of, well, I think that in fairness, uh, the boys play pretty it is, well. I, and I, <laughs> Actually, that's I get a lot of that from Heathrow Longstay when I used to do a lot of flying, which feels like a long time ago. You'd get the Longstay bus into the terminal, and that would always have yeah. that kind of gearbox. Yes. Also, right. they, they drive them like bastards, don't they? They, they get yeah, yeah. out of the car park onto the access road, and they absolutely gun them. So you get a lot of... Oh, it's like a hydro... I think it's a hydraulic... Isn't it hydraulic? Um... Well, I'll be honest. I remembered this last week after we recorded the last podcast and I then started trying to look it up and I was I was brushing my teeth while watching bus videos on YouTube and I suddenly thought I hope my wife doesn't walk in go, what are you looking at on your phone nothing were you looking at videos of a Leyland National being driven along might have been oh I couldn't well, quite you're starting to quite... you're getting like me where you've got to put something on during the the, the brushing the teeth Having the week, yeah. You see, I don't normally do that. I, I did think of you. I thought this is the point at which Johnny would be watching an Iron Maiden live in concert. I was, I was, I was, oh look, I was doing it. Last can night. I play with Madness live in Dusseldorf in '98? <laughs> it was because I, I, I can't hear a lot. That's the problem. I was. I ended up holding the phone right to my ear to try and hear bus gear changes because yeah. of the electric toothbrush making oh, so much noise. Oh, because it's, it's but, vibrating through your jawline, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, but I was wondering, there must be some bus heads who listen to this, and maybe they could set us straight because that's it. There, there must be. There is a sort of a particular kind of, is it a fluid flywheel type of thing? Yeah, I will ask my brother. He'll give me the full Gordon Murray esque download. If I, in fact, you know, you mentioned was it a Leyland Olympian? Yes. Well, maybe that's why sports people talk like that. It's paying homage to an old coach um, gearbox. <laughs> And that's when they're taught to do PR and public speaking, they always reference back to the gearbox of an elderly coach. Maybe that's what they do because of its namesake. Yeah. But that's it, it just reminded me because I think, I, I, I mean, I, just, I don't know in, uh, half enough about this, but I have a feeling that it might be because those buses have pre selected gearboxes. I'm pretty sure they do. And, and, a, and a fluid flywheel of some sort. And that is why they make that weird noise. I used to but go I don't to know. school I used to go to school in in a coach with a pre-selector box because I remember looking at the little box um the gate on a tiny little it's a tiny little box with a yes. gate on it to on, on the arm at the right-hand side of the driver. Yes. I, I always the same. Looked. I was fascinated by it because it was an open gate, wasn't it? Was it? Totally like on a open. Ferrari. Oh yeah, look mega. Yeah. And it was quite a short stubby stick. It wasn't a long manual wand like they have in the coaches the traditional ones, and I always used to think, oh, that's neat. And our driver of that particular one was called Ken, who wore grey who wore grey slip-ons. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what, I don't even know what car he used. And his name was Ken, he was a very nice guy. He had a flat top, grey slip-ons, and he, and he had a bracelet, a, quite a flat, linky bracelet, which I think said Ken on it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it was just, it was... Textbook coach driver um, with the short sleeve shirt, of course, even in winter. And uh, yeah, the pre-selector box is just by the sliding window, isn't it? Because you can slide the window back because he slides the window to say hello to any other bus driver or to swear at someone that had parked in the wrong place <laughs> going through one of the yeah. villages. It's funny what you remember, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's funny, funny what, you, what remember. you remember, isn't it? Do you know, I had that this morning because I suddenly remembered that in 1984, Five, Car Magazine ran a competition to win a Porsche 924S. Oh, they put that car on the cover because it was like, you know, it was, it was that 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 car had always been seen as sort of the runt of the family, and then the S put in the inverted commas proper Porsche engine and sort of became a bit more serious. And I remember Car being quite impressed with it to the extent that they gave one away in a competition. Yeah, what we love it and so much, we don't want to keep it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that kind I wonder of how this how this came about. It's weird because there's, there's in, there are enough people still around: Steve Cropley, Gavin Green, all of these people who were on car 
in its mid 80s heyday who might remember this but the the giving away of a car i mean it was an expensive car yeah even for an entry-level porsche so i presume porsche did them a deal or gave it to them i don't know uh, but the tiebreaker. Bloody hell, you imagine that now. Well, I know, you just sort of, what would it be? Base model car. box. To, there's a story about a magazine once giving away a car, and then for some reason, the person who won it didn't collect it or something, and it just ended up gathering dust in their car park. What? <laughs> yeah, it was all a bit dodgy, but um, no names, no pack drill. It was a long time ago. We used, uh, we used to give away the, cars on fifth gear um, years ago when yeah, I first you started. Did, on, didn't you? Yeah, and they used to get thousands hundreds of thousands of entries and it was always sad when they were given away to people who just entered a competition and didn't really care about the car and a lot they, of the runners and people like that used to or some of the directors would deliver the cars to their house and one of them i'm not oh saying who one time one car never arrived at the competition winner's house because it may or may not have been completely destroyed on a back road by by because allegedly a bus pulled out in front of it oh did it allegedly one of those yeah what well, uh, it's pre-selected gearbox got jammed oh, that's right and it ended it's that, that it terrible thing across the road you realize you're yeah. in a boxster porsche and you're spinning wildly through hedges and ditches <laughs> all to avoid a bust <laughs> uh they were second-hand cars you used to give away on fifth gear yeah we used they? to give away clean second-hand cars we have given away or had given away brand new might have given away a brand new fiat 500 when they first came out so like a oh. a lower priced car but that was fresh at the time but we used to i mean i remember one we gave away a tommy mackin and mitsubishi evo that was like the best one you could buy in the country yeah and and they bought it to flog it on and everyone was like this car's too good we shouldn't give this away and once we gave away a ferrari the person that won it um lived in a, on a in a high-rise flat what, in, on, in a what, dodgy area what kind of ferrari I think it was a 308. Oh. I think this it was back when they were not worth This saying. was when they were, you know, when they were t- 20 grand maybe mm. at the most. Mm. Um and and the and the yeah, when one of the people from the from the show delivered it to their house, they were not bothered about. It. They were like, "Yeah, if you just park it somewhere down there, there's there's a load of parking spaces if you can find one, put it in there." And they were, and they were like, "Oh, can we just get a sound bite from you and like a shot of you by the car?" And they're like, "Yeah, what are you what are you going to do with the car?" And they went, "I'm going to put it on eBay tomorrow." Like, oh, God. okay, thanks. All right, bye then. <laughs> it's really sad because it apparently it was in excellent condition. And, and the, the the person from Fifth Gear walked away and they just said, I bet you that's going to get vandalised tonight. <laughs> mm. It's very sad. But, yeah. That's, it's like I once watched an episode of Homes Under the Hammer. This might happen a lot on that show. I haven't watched it that much. But you I watched so one have. where... But you know it's usually... They want to focus on someone who's... You know, buying a house at auction because they want to live in it, and it's the, you know it's, the, it's their first house they bought or something. There's a good backstory to it, and there's one guy bought it. He's just a professional landlord, and then yeah. the presenters having to really work hard and go. But they, 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 it does look like the roof's going to need repairing. I mean, that's going to be a challenge, isn't it? Not really. I've got a contract. I'll do that tomorrow. <laughs> and I mean, obviously, you, you say you want to rent it out, but it's going to need repainting from top to. But yeah, my paintings are coming in tomorrow as well. Yeah. No problem at all. In fact, they've already started behind you. Look, look behind you. Yeah, exactly. It was. It really was like that. And then, <laughs> to be, you know, they want a kind of. Well, the good news is, you know, they're trying to build in some jeopardy, and there was no jeopardy. So get, well, you know, I mean, it, it does look like really this woodwork could do with. Yeah, I know. My carpenter's coming in. He's going to do that. It was just like there were no problems for this guy. It, it, it'll all be done. It'll be, I'll have people in here by Friday. And he did. And they kind of went, well, he said he'd have people in here by Friday. That sounded like a tall order, but um, the, here they are. And it just, there was nothing. They hadn't, he was giving them nothing. <laughs> there was no story. And Absolutely. it's just like that. What are you doing with the car? It's going on eBay. Oh, yeah. No, that's not a happy ending, is it? That's just you trousering 18 grand. <laughs> well, that's the problem. It was a real sad emoji face moment of going, oh, so you didn't really want that car, did you? Whereas other people couldn't believe it. You know, to them, it was life changing. I've just yeah. won a car that I, you know, the, one of them, I think, was when the, not long after the Mini Cooper S came out. Yeah. And I think they might have given a brand new one away. And there were blown for six almost crying and and i think that's that's well that's, that's nice good. isn't it yeah. that's nice yeah, that's cool. brought joy I'd love hey to actually those original mini cooper s's were a good footballer being interviewed car with the automatic do you remember those because the supercharger wine 
oh, with yeah. that not very good automatic gearbox that they had on those. It was a... <laughs> very that whiny. That was Tim Hedman peak. after a particularly stressful yeah. match. <laughs> yeah, it was challenging. I hit the ball. Um, I don't remember Tim Hedman ever saying, I hit the ball. I think that was always taken. <laughs> Tim Hedman. <laughs> you, could, you could infer that from what he was saying as a professional tennis player. Um, <laughs> but where were we? Oh, yeah. So talking of competitions, uh, the, yeah. the car magazine competition to give away a Porsche 924S, the tiebreaker that you had to do was to write a limerick that incorporated the word Porsche. Right. And I can still remember... I I suddenly remember this because you said it's amazing the things you remember. I realised I can still remember the winning limerick for that competition, which was 37 years ago. Bloody hell, Richard. A streamlined young lass from Tyree, when asked to reveal her CD, said, might I inquire if what you require is that of my Porsche or me? What? I can still remember that, and that's really... I mean... Can't remember. I mean, I'm, I'm ah. impressed with that. I'm very I can also remember, well, because we entered that competition. I say we, because me and my mum sat down, and because I was like ten at the time, and and I was like, Mum, Dad, look, you can win a, you can win a Porsche, and um, and so I, I sat down with my mum and we wrote a limerick and entered that competition and didn't win, but I can still remember that as well. I thought, in retrospect, it was quite good. Our entry. It was an exceedingly rich banker's daughter, while speeding along in her Porsche, span round once or twice on a patch of black ice and pranged what her daddy had bought her. Oh, I like that. That's quite that's, good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's good. That's really Didn't good. Didn't win the Porsche, though. So um, Anyway, there we go. So, th- shit that clutters your mind. Well, if I, I know of a 924 in a hedge in Cardiff, if you want one. Um, I could probably get it for you at a reasonable price, if that was of interest. Uh any updates on that? The nine... Since I think it's it's one of your biggest stories of recent times, isn't it? The, yeah, the, I've just been contacted by a point. Chilean newspaper for an interview about it, weirdly. What? Um, <laughs> it's true. I, honestly, I've just checked my emails this morning. <laughs> what? got to speak to a Chilean newspaper. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I think it's the, the white 912 has sold. The okay. 911, which I the red car, which I don't actually think is a 911. I think it's a 912 with 911s running gear, is right. being. Um, there's a lot of bartering going on there. The MX-5s I think are reserved, and the Mercedes 190s I think will end up being scrapped or. Oh. Okay. Or you know they might make donors. I don't think they'll be. And the, the, I don't think anyone's pounced on the nine two fours yet. Although the bloke that bought the nine twelve thinks he's going to have to buy one of them because it's in his way. And if not, <laughs> and, and he, <laughs> which I thought was quite what, funny. Well, on the basis that if he tries to remove it, it will break, and then he'll he'll have to pay for it anyway. Yeah, I think it's such an involved process getting the cars out safely. Um, yeah. that I think he'll probably have to buy one. He he has a number of Porsche projects anyway, so he's uh, he's he restores cars himself. Oh. I think he'll probably. He said I'll probably buy it, uh, assess it when I get it home, sell it on as a project. Because he said, how bad are the nine two fours? I said, I think you might make one good one out of the two, but. How These much are the 924s that you fell through the roof I of fell one through of the sunroof of one of them and thought I'd lacerated my legs and I didn't dare look down. Uh, and then I realised that it was actually, uh, it's a composite roof, uh, sunroof in those, which I didn't know. You, oh, you, you learn things that, new yeah. every day, but I can tell yeah. you that. It's a glass fibre roof. And um, I hadn't lacerated my legs. And that uh, sadly, yeah, the... the I think I think you you could make one good one, but they're both nine two four turbos. One's a first generation and one's a second. And I didn't realise there's a, there are a couple of differences. They didn't make the first gen for very long. Mm. Um, don't and one of them is fire, the first gen one is fire damage, so it's only good for some select parts. I think, or you could use the shell for racing. I mean, you could make a racing car if you wanted. Yeah, they do race That's, them, don't they? Yeah. So and um, the. 924 that many 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 years ago on top gear they, we did a cheap porsches challenge back when you could get front engine old porsches for not much like, money at like all two grand yeah yeah and hammond bought a 924 
and that car as far as i know still exists and was bought by one of our team and his uncle and they used it to hill climb really and i think his uncle still hill climbs it Oh, I nearly did a CVT. Really? Yeah. That's really? Amazing. That's an amazing. Oh, that's that's sort of... good to know. That's good. So to know. yeah, that uh, they they definitely have, you know, because of the transaxle gearbox, they're so lovely and balanced. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, like, oh, I c- I don't think I could do a nine two four, but I could do a nine four four. I was thinking this because of no, I, I, something came up about 94s which led me to suddenly remember that I could I could recall limericks from the 80s it was quite troubling but um I was I was because of 94s being in my mind I was suddenly thinking I'd love to have a go in one I've never driven one and I wonder if they're actually sort of really quite nice I bet they are all right I just feel like for a long time uh, and listeners can, by all means, if there's listeners who have a 924 or a positive 924 experience, do write to us. Yeah. But um, I can't, <laughs> Do I, mark your emails, positive 924 positive experience. Nine, yes. Cause I, Two more from them later. Because <laughs> they, they were so damn cheap for a long time. But also, yeah. 914s were about the same price for a long time. And of course, the 914 mid-engined Volkswagen-derived bits. So again, mm. a bit of a mongrel Porsche, mm. but I love mm. the style and the the sort of silhouette of the 914. So in my head, I was always like, if I had that money and I was going to buy a, a, a lower end, lower ranking Porsche, I'd get a 914. Problem is, 914s have gone expensive now. It's a real shame. Yeah, they have, and it annoys me because I wish I'd, as the as 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 business people say, I wish I'd pulled the trigger on one earlier. Oh, don't. Yeah, it drives me nuts. I wish I'd drawn back Pulled the, the trigger. I wish I'd drawn back the bow. Um, yeah, <laughs> yes, I wish. <laughs> and, and fired the arrow at, at a nine fourteen. <laughs> it's such. I pulled the trigger. It's, uh, it irritates me that I know. one. And it's you just see a click it a lot. Of the mouse, isn't it? It's just click and collect. Exactly. And it's also the smaller and less interesting the item, the worse it sounds. Go, listen, guys, just wait here. I'm going to pop into that newsagent and uh, pull the trigger on a packet of strong mints. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> but even when it's a car, it's, it's, it's sort of it's just that sort of the the, the most blendic end of piston. It is, that is, is where is, I see it a lot. That it is go, yeah, popped into my local Beamer dealer. Got some uh, got some deals going on there. The the one thirty five, so I pulled the trigger there and then, and it's just I can't abide that sort of. There's those certain people who kick around on on the internet who always have to make it sound like they're incredible deal makers wherever they go. It's, it's basically it's it's Alan Partridge online only, isn't it? Yeah. Well, oh, I saw you on Twitter the other day. Weren't you making the point that Alan Sugar sometimes comes across like one of those people who's made successful businesses despite being quite thin? <laughs> oh, yeah, completely. <laughs> <laughs> I and I suddenly I read you and I thought I think you've got a point there because the bit that always drives me nuts about Alan Sugar is that he clearly has prepared one-liners but he's not very good at delivering them he's just terrible he's at delivering pissed. them he makes you sound stupid I, 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 there's a sort of there's a slight Donald Trump element of not really being able to formulate the sentence properly before yeah. it emerges from your mouth well again Donald Trump I don't believe Donald Trump is a bright man and but you know it's sort of these great deal makers trump sugar people on piston heads i suspect it's just sheer sort of brute force oh, it's it just is. being a cocky bell end yes. that allows them to think they've get, got a good deal and often they probably haven't or the person they're doing the deal with just goes look if i give you another 10 quid off will you leave me alone <laughs> yeah i'll pay you to leave that's what it, that's the ultimate yeah. deal maker I'll annoy you to the point where you you actually throwing money at me in order to walk away. Right, Richard, I have seen what have you have done with off of your book writing. I think <laughs> what you have have done. I really like your business prospecting. I think you could be really good if you come off of me with what, what around the office and all that. I reckon we could make some deals. This could be a multi-million pound deal. What off of you writing the books? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> boring car trivia. You see, the problem with that, Richard, is it's boring. People don't buy boring books. You need to have a much better title, like Amazing Car Book. Yeah? I've got it. Amstrad Car Trivia. Yeah. <laughs> it's a winner. 
Um, By the way, everybody, I used to sell computers and also I drive (laughs) around in a Rolls Royce with not very many numbers on the number plate. Therefore, (laughs) off of me being rich and all that, I've got authority. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) P.S. I haven't thought about what I'm going to say before I say it. (laughs) Yeah. So for these one-liners, I've got written on a cue card. Your challenge was making jam. And you know what? You got into a real jam. <laughs> Do you know what this jam making challenge turned into? A sticky situation. Oh, God, awful. It's, it sounds like when a computer delivers. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe that's it. Maybe he's got some khaki old Amstrad 486 machine that writes in one liners in the back room. <laughs> I'd like it if he just. The, the Ams Gags. Just... Come on, Ams Gags. What have you got for me today? The challenge is opening a bird sanctuary. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Brilliant. <laughs> well, uh, trouble with this bird sanctuary of yours, it did not take flight. Oh, God. Thanks, no. Ams Gags. Oh, I would love it if Alan Sugar ran a rally school in Wales, and, <laughs> but without any prior experience of performance driving. So he just gives all the one-liners, doesn't he? But sort of all jumbled the up. The folly of the overconfident man That's opening right. a business in a field he doesn't understand. So he's, he starts off... Right, look, right, we've got to go left, right? What? <laughs> I've got a fleet. I've bought. I've, I've heard that Fords have a rich history in rally. I've bought a fleet of probes. They've got roll cages in case you roll, you protect your head. Everyone's going out on this stage. Remember, you t- you go in slowly, you come out slowly, and then if you want to <laughs> go fast, you go fast where you feel it, you can go fast. Okay, so you do that. Uh, we'll put slick tyres on. If it looks muddy, we'll be okay. It's what we do in the <laughs> sport. The on that. <laughs> Go, Alan, have you... This rallying challenge was a bleeding disaster. You left her out there on her own. Why weren't you rallying around? Oh, Thanks, gosh. Sam Skaggs. Yeah, well, somebody's following him with a cymbal and a snare drum, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> would be fantastic instead of that sort of bed of dramatic music they put under those boardroom scenes there is just a guy with a cymbal and a snare (laughs) bleeding bleeding bloody bleeding I would like in all honesty I would like Alan Sugar to bankroll a drift team uh, on the proviso that they they teach him up to can you imagine but he has to talk his way round as he's in a drift competition going door to door with I don't know, Ireland's James <laughs> Dean in a, in a really, like, whistling SS14 <laughs> Sylvia. And he's still just talking utter nonsense as he's going round. So they got, you know, when you come off the throttle on those turbos, they go... Yeah. Alan's going, well, what are you what are you going to do? Well, I'm just going, I'm going to tip it in. I can't breathe properly. I can't even see, but I'm going in. I'm letting go of the wheel and it's just wheeling itself. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm making money as I'm driving. Yeah, I reckon that's that's what that's what his line would be. You know, when he comes in and he does all right in the competition, they go, oh, "Alan, you did surprisingly well, considering your lack of drift experience." You go well. The, th- the thing about me is, uh, my name's Lord Sugar. I actually was making money as I was driving around then because I've got so many th- things what I've half of invested in and all that. <laughs> and so, <laughs> do you know what bothers me about Sir Lord Alan Sugar is that his he, he's his beard is not he's not committed <laughs> enough to having a beard. It's like either let it grow bigger so it's clearly a beard, or have a shave and don't have a beard. At the moment, he's got that sort of weird like his face looks like a ball bag and it's just I, I can't get on with it at all it's in a bit it's in a bit like when you put, it's in a bit like when you put grass seed down but don't water it often enough and well, so it, well, it's, it's sort of thin yeah, thin and scrubby it's just areas yeah. of complete sparseness and you're like yeah oh. yeah yeah well, that's, and he'll that's point, he'll, point sort of, he'll walk in and he'll point at the barber you I employed you to like off of like tidy in my beard, and it looks a terrible mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's like from a distance you go, oh look, here comes Sir Lord Allen, and he hasn't got a beard. And then as you get closer, you're kind of narrowing your eyes, going, oh, how's he? <laughs> He's, and then he finally comes up to you, go, I bleeding bloody, 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 and you go, oh, you have got a beard. 
I think he should be just faint. really sweary, and so he points at people <laughs> like that. <laughs> Oi, what, Julie, you the are Apprentice a, After Dark. Yeah, Julie, you're a fucking prick. You need to get out, <laughs> Alan. Listen, <laughs> listen, you cock weasel. Climb out of that door right, now. Listen up, wank you chops. With my bell. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> did you say slord? Slord? Is he Sralan or slord? Sralan, Sralan, slord, slord, Alan. Slord. I don't know. Slord, 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 Alan. <laughs> he is definitely, I think, one of those people who is absolutely insistent that everyone calls him Lord Sugar. Oh, completely, I bet. We're saying all this. Really cross about, I hope though. he doesn't complain to us. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess he doesn't listen, but who knows? Maybe he does. I'm bleeding, bloody, bloody, bloody bleeding listen, cross about this. It's a load of toss. You pricks. I think Alan should sponsor this podcast. I don't know what business he <laughs> would. <laughs> Maybe his, one of his, his forthcoming one of his many, many products. That, that, that telephone that could do emails but was plugged into your landline, they could sponsor us. <laughs> that would be the kind of sponsor this podcast would attract. This podcast has been recorded on Sir Alan's um, um, so- email phone. <laughs> <laughs> Microphone. <laughs> no, you no. can't take it with you. It's plugged into the wall. Salad. Um Well, this is probably a good time to wrap things up and uh, at least brief our lawyers on what might be coming their way. Um, I, was, I didn't even get a chance to talk about um, the possibility of Gordon Murray making body shells for cars out of prawn shells because they're one of the lightest things I could possibly think of, and they often get discarded. That's quite a good idea. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, Gordon Murray's... Did you suggest it to him? No, I've just thought of it this morning, the prawn shell uh, composite. Well, keep your powder dry. Keep your prawn shells dry, because you could have have a, a a business idea there. Get Alan Sugar to bankroll The GMA prawn shell, yeah. Yeah, in association with Amstrad. Right then, anyway, uh, before we go, uh, as usual, I have three things to tell you. They are one, Johnny has a solo YouTube channel, and if you've been paying attention, you'll know that the uh, latest video on it is Gordon Murray talking about his new T33. This is very interesting indeed. Uh, Two, I have various books out, one of them called A Medium-Sized Book of Boring Car Trivia. Genesis in the Boring Car Trivia series. Uh, It's available from Amazon, or you can buy it from the Smith & Sniff merch shop. Go to the late breakshow.com and follow the merch links to see that there's also t-shirts and mugs and all manner of stuff there is stickers and uh, the third thing that i have to tell you is that the original host of you've been framed was going to be richard madeley wow i did not know that and he uh, I know it's not that interesting is it but anyway it, i just discovered it and i thought i'd stick it in there he filmed the pilot and then they decided to give the job to jeremy beadle instead so madeley madeley's lost got out. a bit of a vtech voice hmm he does he do goes a little high. bit. Uh, he, he gets a bit cammy just before he changes up. Oh, yeah. No, he does because he goes, well, the thing is, Judy. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. It's not Judy anymore, is it? She stays at home now. She's had enough. Um, no, she's born anyway. anyway. All right, then. Well, uh, we'll see you all again uh, next week. Until then, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm laughing and I don't know why either. I'm, I'm laughing at you I'm, laughing. That's a sign of madness. I'm, I'm, I'm Johnny Smith.